Let's all stand up. We're going to get right into the Bible message at this time. Let's stand up for the reading of God's Word. I'd like for you to take the Bible and go with me to the book of Judges. We stand for the reading of God's Word and then we'll be seated. And um, I'm excited about after church too. I like hot dogs. Amen. I don't mind a hot dog at all. My problem is I end up helping myself to a few extra, you know. They're easy, just a boom. They're gone that quick. And uh, But we're looking forward to a good time together. And The brats are going to be just right, no doubt. And we're very thankful. We do this every year. We have a hot dog Sunday. We, I look, we champion Father's Day around here. Amen. There's some big services, but I don't know if there's any bigger than Father's Day. Can I get a witness, man? Come on now. And uh, may I keep telling our church, one day we're going to bounce houses out there on Father's Day. And we invite the whole world in here, you know. I'd like for you to go to the second chapter of Judges. Very grateful to the Lord. And if you're a guest here, we want to make sure you get a, one of our welcome cards. And our welcome cards also have uh, these Gospel First notepads. And we want to make sure you get that, so we'll get that to you. Uh, we're really trying to stress in our heart to be a Gospel First Christian. Do our very best to be Gospel First in what we do. All right, if you're in Judges 2, say amen. Amen, amen. 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 All right, I want you to read with me. And we're going to go to verse number 8. No, we'll start in verse 7. We'll start at verse 7, and we'll read all the way to verse number 19. And you read in your heart as I read out loud, then we'll pray and be seated. And when God's help, we'll be stirred up. And the Bible says, starting in verse number 7, And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnathus, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Baal. And they forsook the Lord, God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal, and Ashtaroth, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers, a spoil them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. So they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Wheresoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a-whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them, and turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. Bless you. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge, and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we ask that you'd help us now. Lord, I know you don't have to have me, but I've got to have thee. I pray that you'd use me for thy glory, and I pray that you'd deal with us today. Thank you, Lord, for our fathers and our spiritual fathers, most of all for you. I pray you'd give us a message in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. There's an interesting passage here that we're reading. 
Joshua, of course, has led the children of Israel into the promised land. Joshua is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And I know my name is Joshua. I can't help it. I like the book. And uh, it's, it's so thrilling about victory. It has the picture as a Christian that we live a victorious life. We can march by faith. We can walk by faith. And we can see victory. God's already given the victory, the power of the Holy Spirit, the promises of His Word. All we need to do is put our feet down and go. Many times our big problem is we just don't go. That two-letter word is powerful in your Christian life. You've got to go. You've got to believe by faith. The Christian life is not to be defeated. The Christian life is not to be, oh me, oh my, what are we going to do next? Down in the mouth, sour face, sauerkraut eating kind of Christianity. It's to be on the mountaintop Christian life. Mountaintops now, they're hard to get to, but there's a joy about serving God and seeing God do something. No doubt about it. We believe He's able. Say it with me. He is able. Let me tell you something. He's able. He's able to do more than what we can even think of according to His great mighty power through the church. In the book of Joshua, they go into Canaan land, that promised place, and they begin to celebrate and they're claiming their ground and they're doing a great work. And then Joshua uh, is at the end of his life and he goes on to be with the Lord. And uh, he goes on, his life is over. And the Bible tells us some things that's very interesting that I want to point out to you today. Now, with it being Father's Day, uh, i got fathers on my heart. But this is not just for daddies. This is for mamas. And this is for the generation coming up. Notice what the Word of God says in verse 7. Very purposefully, without any accident, God purposefully says, And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders. Maybe you like to highlight things. That's a spot to highlight in your Bible. Joshua was living. They served the Lord. The people that came after Joshua, they served the Lord. Watch what it says. Uh, he has seen all the great works of the Lord. Now that's one of the main reasons why these people served them. They saw God work. They knew the work of God. Let me put it this way. Look right here. They had a relationship with the Lord. When you know the way God works, you begin to know about Him and there's an intimate walk with God and you. Notice what happens next. The Bible says in verse number Eight, that Joshua passes, they buried him, verse 9, verse 10, and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. So everybody that knew Joshua and saw the work, and saw the victory, I mean, you're talking about big time work. How about uh, the walls come tumbling down? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, 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 and the walls came tumbling Thank you. Down. They saw it, man. They saw it. Notice what it says, though. It says, And there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. I mean, I'll be honest, it's hard to think that one generation later, and people don't know them. But we get to see the Bible. We see it in our own country today, don't we? I grew up in a day, I mean, when I was a grown baby boy, church went like this on Sunday. Get ready. 9.45, Sunday school. 11 o'clock, worship service. 5 p.m., training union. 6 p.m., choir practice. 7 p.m., church service. That was Sunday growing up for me. Amen. And every church operated like that. And then you had stuff Monday, you had stuff Tuesday, Wednesday. People lived at church. Right. Now that's the generation that was before me. We're one generation now, and now church is on Sunday. They don't have four services like that. Now they've gone to one because they're having such a hard time to get anybody to come to two. And now they're canceling this. And now you barely find this. We're talking about a generation that knows not God. 
You can find, you know, you look on yesterday's uh, uh, life and even watching sports yesteryears, announcers would say things like this, well, the writing's on the wall. Bible talk. And people now in this generation we're living, they know nothing about the Bible. It's only been a generation. This generation knew not the Lord. We're talking about the generation of those that came after Joshua. The mighty works that God did in Joshua's day. Notice what it says in verse 11. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so Baum, you see that house pronounced Baum, as the emphasis of a plurality. They were worshiping all the gods around them. They were fitting into the mold of society. They were doing what everybody was doing. They were worshiping the way that everybody was worshiping. They had their eyes set on being like the world instead of being God's special chosen people. And this day we're living in, there's so many Christians that are getting their eyes in the world. They want to be like everybody else but God's children. Don't identify me like that. Identify me like the world. That's the mindset that's going on. The new generation does not see the importance of being identified with God's people. This is just a generation that came after. Verse 12, And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers. It's hard to believe, it, isn't it? And then it goes on to explain some of the things that they did, how they trespassed, how they forsook. And then it tells us some things that it highlights in verse 17, it says, And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. God sent them messengers. God sent them judges. God sent them deliverers to help them. And they still would not listen. Still would not listen. But they went a whoring. By the way, isn't that an interesting word that God chooses to let us know His view on those that go after another God? after you've known the true God, a whoring. He says, after other gods and bow themselves under them, they turn quickly out of the way. I think that's interesting. The purposeful use that God says, they turned quickly out of the way. The judges would come, they would get right, but quickly, quickly they'd go back. I hope this, listen, I hope you're not in a place of your life when you sin over and over again and God deals with you and you repent, you quickly go right back at it. Quickly go back into what you say, God, I'm, uh, help me. They quickly went back. And the Lord is not pleased with it. The Bible says in verse 19, And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves. Notice this phrase, More than their fathers. You know, the newer generation just kept getting worse. They kept getting worse. I'm going to highlight that in a moment. Verse 20, watch what God says. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, Because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. God says, You know what? I'm taking my hand of protection off. I'm taking my blessing off. He's actually, get this, get this, he's actually going to deliver them to their enemies. Now think about, think about it. But look, I'm a, I'm a up, I'm, I'm a top side guy. I'm not a gloom and doom preacher. You know what I'm saying? If the whole world's saying it's ending tomorrow, I'm still saying, praise God, everything's all right in my father's house. I'm not worried about those things. I'm not a gloom and doom guy. I watch this much of the news. You know what I mean? I'm trying to watch for Jesus. That's all I'm doing. But here's here's reality. When a generation knows not God, God says, I'm going to turn them over to their enemies. And if America has a generation that knows, and by the way, you might be the problem. And if your children got to go through a war, and your grandchildren got to know a different country, and we got to watch an awful mess take place, Maybe you need to be doing some of this. 
It's me that helped a generation. No, not God. And we've been delivered. Delivered. Like, here you go. I'm not going to help them out. There's been, there's, been powerful, there's been powerful nations that have fallen before us. I'm not a gloom and doom preacher, but I'm here to tell you, according to the Word of God, when a generation knows not God, who knew God, that's, that's a bad place to be in. The Bible shows us some things, and I want to help you see, especially daddies, how does a generation know not God? I want to show you some things. Go with me again to verse 10. And God tells us in verse 10, And also all that generation were gathered unto the fathers, and there was another generation. I like that. Another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Number one, we see this. They knew not the Lord so and the works. So number one, the fathers stopped testifying. The fathers stopped testifying. This generation knew not the Lord, nor His works. Whose fault is that? Whose fault is it when a generation knows not God? It's mom and daddy's fault because they stopped talking about God and the works that He's been doing. Hey, it's not good enough for you just to know about His works, Daddy. You better be sitting around your kitchen table talking to those children and those grandchildren about the works of God because there's a generation. There's a generation growing up and they need to know about God and the mighty works that He's done. And if you're not going to shed a tear and talk about your salvation and this special talk and words that bring his attention or her attention to the work of God, shame on you because they're not going to know about God. You've got to testify. Look with me in Psalm 78. God shows us in Psalm 78 a great cross-reference to this to help us to see the importance of a generation to come. Psalm 78, verse 1, it says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have, what's it say, told us. Daddy, there's a lot riding on you. Granddaddy, there's a lot riding on you. Mama, hey, there's a lot riding. And what will we do? It says in verse 4, We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. Fathers have stopped testifying. Fathers have stopped testifying about the works of God. And look, someone says, Well, I just don't think I, I don't think I played fetch enough with my son to help him out. No, 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 sir. You didn't talk about God enough to help him out. I don't know if I, I did, and my little girls, I, I should have done better at helping them in the kitchen. And I, there may be some truth to that. But let me tell you what you forgot to do. You forgot to keep testifying about the wonderful works of God to your children. Hey, God can do amazing things with our children if they can depend on them. What's been the supper talk lately at your house? What's been said in the car as y'all drive? When was the last time you shared your testimony? You said, well, they've heard it. They know it. Yeah, tell it again. Amen. And again. Let them know the biggest day that's ever come into your life and your world was the day you learned you were a sinner and Jesus is the Savior. Let them know. That's the greatest story to tell. And our lips ought to be sharing that with our children. And God help me if I don't talk about the wonderful works to my little girls as they're growing up and my high schoolers as they're keeping on. God help me that they hear the wonderful works of God. Because let me tell you something. If we don't testify, there will be a generation that will not know. Look what else it says. 
For verse 5, it says, He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. God commanded that they should make these known to their children. This is our duty. Uh, I, I just think I lost my head sometimes with my children. I'll tell you what you probably didn't do. You didn't spend enough time talking about the works of God with your children. They didn't see the tear come out when you start talking about salvation. They saw you get excited about the ball game, but they didn't see you get excited about the works of God. Isn't it messed up how we are? You can go to the basketball court and mom and dad are screaming all over the place. Right. Ball fields are so excited. And Junior's never seen mom and dad get that worked up over the things of God. The excitement that comes. I mean, look, I'm pumped up. We're about to start our family vacation. Woo! We're going to the national parks. I'm excited. We're hitting all of them. I'll be back about three years from now, okay? And uh, but we're excited. We're going to we're going to Yellowstone. Never been. First time. We're going to Glacier. Woo! I'm hoping to get, you know, about 70 yards, big old grizz. You know what I'm saying? I'll have three bear sprays ready to go in case it comes at me. But you know. I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Pray for me. Pray for me. But uh, we're going to have a good time. You know, we're coming back. going to hit uh, uh, Yosemite and all that. Uh, but let me tell you this. I sure don't want to be excited about that stuff more than I get excited about God and His works. And I, I, I love saying this. I love looking up and saying, oh, look at that. God made that. We're going to talk about who He is. You've got to testify, Mom and Dad. You got to testify. Look what it says, moving on, verse 6. That the generation to come might know. Sounds like what we read in Judges. He commanded the dads, the moms to talk, to testify, so the generation to come might know. In the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Get that? You tell it to your children, so your children tell it to their children. By the way, parents, listen to me. Did you ever think that you're actually raising the parents of your grandchildren? That'll make you change the way you parent. You are training the very parents of your grandchildren. Right. What kind of mom do you want your girl to be to your granddaughter? What kind of dad do you want uh, your son to be to your grandson? This is who you're raising. This is who you're rearing up. And one day there'll be a parent over your grandchild. And with God's help, we can testify. With God's help, they'll testify. And with God's help, they will also continue to testify. Number two, not only you have to testify, we stop testifying, but the fathers not only stop testifying, but the fathers stopped training. They stopped training. The Bible tells us that our children are arrows. The Bible tells us that we are to train a child in the way he should go. Training, adjustments need to be made. Amen. Yeah, sometimes those adjustments go boom, boom, boom. But we do them. Adjustments. Let me help you get in line in the right way. There's training. We're testifying. We're training. Let me give you one more. We're teaching. Now look, I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. And I believe everybody can hit an altar on this point. So please listen with your heart. As parents, we rely way too much on pastors and Sunday school teachers and Christian schools and podcasts and internets to teach our children the Word of God. We rely too much on the pastor to teach our children the Word of God. We rely too much on a Sunday school teacher to teach our child the Word of God. I believe if we were honest people. You ready for this? Hold on tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. 
I believe those that are parents in this room and grandparents, I believe if we were honest, we'd find out the majority of families do a poor, poor job in being the ones that actually teach and instill to their children and grandchildren the Word of God. Hey, we got them at church. That's great. Amen. Please, I'm going to keep that up. But God has actually given the command to the parent to teach the child. Right. Thank God for those ministers that can go beside the home and stand straight with the truth and reinforce the things that we're doing. But if we were honest, we've done a poor job. By the way, I believe every family that might say, I've done a poor job. I believe if they were to say, Dear God, forgive me, and I want to do a better job. And then if they took their children's hands and said, With a tear coming down in sincerity, that makes a difference. I want you to forgive me. I know that there's some things I could have done better, and I want to try with what time I have with you to do a better job. I might not be perfect, but I want to work harder at teaching you the things of God. I believe that kind of spirit a child, a teenager would accept and say, I'm ready. We need to get these things right, don't we? I'm still a believer. God help me that when someone says family altar, it can actually alter the family. I'm a believer. We must testify we must train. We must teach. Now I'm going to show you something that is extremely powerful in the text that we read. I will not keep you, as I heard in Sunday school this morning, sometimes we are more hungry on Sunday than other days of the week. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Hot dogs are cooking, brats are just right, but hang on tight. I'm about to show you these three things are huge in the text that we learn. The first thing I want to point out, if you go back to the text, it says this. Now watch, watch this. It tells us in verse 17, And they that would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a-whoring after their gods and bowed themselves unto them, they turned quickly out of the way which, which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments, of the Lord, but they did not so. And then verse 19, it says this, And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupt themselves more than their fathers. Remember that? Let me give you some practical points, Dad, Mom, grandparents. You need to know these practical points. Number one, your children will do in excess what you do. Number one, your children will do in excess what you do. If you tolerate a little here, you can mark it down. They're going to tolerate a lot there. You realize that Joshua messed up. Did you catch this in the text? And I read, verse 20. And the anger of the Lord, let's go to verse 21. I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. Interesting statement. If you went to chapter 1, I will read it. You just listen. The Bible tells us, see, when God sent Joshua in the Canaan land, God told Joshua to drive out every inhabitant. He did a lot of them, but he actually left some. Verse 21, the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin. Verse 27, Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shean and her towns. Verse 29, Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites. Verse 30, Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants. Verse 31, Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants. And on and on it says it. And then God again repeats that thought in verse 21 of chapter 2. He says, I'm not going to drive out those enemies which Joshua left behind 
Did you know that Joshua chose to tolerate some of the inhabitants that God said, get out? And I'm going to tell you, what you do, mom and dad, your children will do in excess. Because he tolerated, now the children are worshiping the false gods of that wicked groups of people. And what are you going to let your children do? You drink a little now? You're opening the floodgates for your children to be full-blown drunkards. You mess around now? You're opening the door for your children to know several marriages and several heartbreaks because of pain and trouble over and over again. You don't read your Bible now? Just a little here, a little there? You're opening the door for your child to not even pick a Bible up ever when they leave your house. You miss church a lot now? You're opening the door for a child. You're opening the door for your child to raise your grandchild to never go to the house of God with their life. What you do now, your children will do in excess. I'm praying that God will use the things. I'm Listen, I'm not perfect, but hopefully with God's help, our children can do in excess the good things. Amen? The right things that mom and dad does. Did you know that Jesus teaches us in John chapter 15? Listen to me. That no servant is greater than their master. What do you think that means? You can apply that in a lot of ways. But mark this down. You think your child's going to be a spiritual giant? when you are as carnal as you are? You think they're going to be excellent for God when you are choosing the things of this world for your life? There's no servant greater than the master. How can you, being the master, live a double life at home and hope and pray? You know, it's crazy, but there are parents that talk like this to their child. Do what I'm telling you. Don't do what, I, what you see me do. Do what I say, not the things I do. Don't listen, don't listen to my actual walk, just listen to my talk. People raise their children like that. Right. Must be outside your mind. Because no servant is greater than the master. <coughs> now I know there's times when God gets a hold of young people and they take off soaring for Christ and they're zealous for the things of God, but that's not the norm. The norm is is they will never go above what mom and dad goes. That's the norm. It doesn't have to be the norm. But let me tell you something. You better keep that in your mind. The second thing I want to show you, and we already mentioned it, and I'll be done, is not only that your children will do an excess, and really no servants above the master, but as I pointed out, Joshua left when he died, notice the third thing, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. There's a reason why God in the scripture says give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. In your home, parents, you cannot allow the devil to get his foot in the door. My sister and I, we fought like I would say cats and dogs, but it is more like hyenas and lions. Can I get a witness? Amen? We fought bloody mess. You'd have thought the Bible came to life slew was in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? We were a mess on each other. And she always got mama's favor. You know what I'm saying? She called my mama. Josh, she's... I'd be, I'd be bloody. My mom will laugh about it today. No joke. I'm bloody, scratch, clawed, gushing all over the place, and I'm in trouble. You know what I mean? But my sister, she had that bedroom. She would beat me up. She's three years old with me, so she picked on me, you know. But I was a big boy. I, I was big and chunky early, you know what I'm saying? And so I would go after her. And she, you know how it is. She'd get in that door. And she'd start to slam. I knew I couldn't dive in it. I knew I couldn't dive in that door. So i just do that real quick maneuver. You know what I'm talking about? That's all you got to do, right? And the door will go, bang, right there. 
And I know I'm getting it. I'm getting in. And I'm going to punch her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she been beating me up. I know I'm not in trouble, but Kyle, I'm swinging. So, you know, sure enough, now I'm getting clawed up to death, you know, coming in. But I'm coming. That's how the devil works. He never comes to somebody's house smelling like smoke. He doesn't come in there with a, a, a pointy tail and a pitchfork and some red outfit. You could see him. There, there's the devil in my front yard. Get out of here, devil. You can't come in here. He, he's so sly. He's Listen to me. He's subtle. That snake. Did you know in the book of Revelation, God identifies Satan again as the serpent. Because his key note that he sings to you and me is how subtle he is. He's as subtle as the letter B is and the word subtle. And as that sneaking devil, he just wants his foot. He just wants his foot. If he gets his foot, guess what's coming next? He's getting in that home. How many homes, listen, like Joshua Joshua left a foothold. Mom, Dad, what, listen to me, what sin do you tolerate in your home? What bad stuff do you tolerate in your home? Because that toleration could be the very thing that's going to ruin and wreck your children as they go in excess with what you've tolerated. We've got to be mindful of these things. I like for everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. And I want you to ask yourself, am I tolerating sin? Am I tolerating bad things? I want you to ask yourself something. Mom, Dad, Daddy, you're the leader. Do you praise Him? Is, this, is your home a testifying home? Because if they don't hear you talk about the works of God, where are they going to get it? There is no one, Dad, listen to me, there is no one, Mom, that is more powerful and more influential to your child than you. Without, that's not even a question. And if you choose to testify, you will impact a life for eternity. We're stopping our training. Are you training your child? Grandparent, are you training them? I'm the man I am today because I had a, a grandmama who still trained grandchildren. My mom did a great job as well, but I'm calling out the grandparents in the room too. Not just the mamas and daddies, but grandmama, granddaddy. You better keep on training. I hope you're not neglecting the powerful message that God is showing us today. But if you are, you know what you can do? I'm going to get it right. I said this and I'll say it again and we'll be done. If we were all honest, if we were all honest, we would come to a place of saying, God, I neglected the responsibility of teaching my child the Word of God. Father in heaven, I pray you'd help us Lord, if there be somebody here today that's never been saved, I pray that they will get saved before it's everlasting too late. God, please don't let them go into eternity and burn in the lake of fire with ever, without ever being rescued. God, please, please, I pray that they'll get saved today. Lord, I pray for the family that you're touching, that you're dealing with, the daddy out there, the mama, the grandparent. God, I pray you'd help us, that generation to come, that generation to come, help us keep testifying, help us keep training. The world's around us, things seem to get more wicked by the moment. The scoffers are loud, the mockers are there, the naysayers are around the corner in the neighborhood. But oh God, give us a fire, give us a fire 
to keep on testifying, to keep on training, and God help us to be teachers. I pray there'll be some family that will decide to change some things. And moms and dads can come together and approach the family and say, we just want you to forgive us and we're going to do a better job and we're not perfect but we love you and we want you to know our great God better. Oh God, help us to not have a generation that knows not you. In Jesus' name. Nobody's looking. I want to ask this question. If you were to die right now, are you going to heaven? If you say, preacher, I don't know if I'm even going to heaven. I doubt it at times. I feel like I know, but there's times in my life I sure do wonder about this thing. I'm not going to embarrass you, but if you don't know for certain about your salvation, I want to pray for you. Would you slip your hand up where you're at right now? Just slip it up. Let me pray for you. I'm looking around. You say, preacher, that's me. I don't know for sure. I'm going to ask everybody in this room to not be ashamed if God's touched your heart to come to the old time altar. You know what, children? I mean, you know what, parents? Your children are watching you on the altar calls. They know about the home. They know what takes place. And they're going to do in excess what mom and daddy does. I want my children knowing what it is to go to the altar when God touches them. And if God's touched you, mama, God's touched you, daddy, don't be afraid of the altar. Father in heaven, I pray you'd help us just to come to thee and confess and ask for your help and claim your promises. Lord, help us to be our very best for Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let's all stand up. The piano's playing right now. As it plays, won't you step out and pray? God's touched your heart. Nearer to thee, oh Lord, nearer to thee, the song says. Nearer to thee. Are you near him today? There may be something God's trying to grow you in. You say, Lord, today I'm going to accept that. I want, I want to do better, Lord. I'm not all I ought to be, but I sure do want it. And God sees you as you come in prayer. And God sees you as your heart gets touched. And God blesses that. God wants to work in your world. God loves your children more than you do. God loves your family more than you do. We're not... We're not perfect people, but we got a perfect God who can help us and we can see victory. I'm going to tell you something. You tolerate this stuff in your home. You're, you're just begging. You're begging the devil to get in that thing. I bet Joshua had no idea that what he was allowing to stay in Canaan was going to be the very thing that the generation to come would follow instead of him. Man, that's powerful. That's powerful. People are praying if God's touched your heart, come on. I'll tell you what, this is great stuff. Father's Day, this is how to have Father's Day. Amen. Yielding yourself again. Maybe somebody just needs to set themselves on fire again. We got a hard society out there, but don't you get them to stop you. You keep testifying, Mama. You keep testifying, Daddy. You keep training, Mama. You keep training, Granddaddy. You keep on teaching. God will help you. Let's sing page 203. Nearer, my God, to thee. Page 203 is a song people are praying on that verse. Nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer to thee. And though it be a cross that raiseth me. to thee near to thee 
Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful for Jesus. God, I pray your blessing.